Welcome to my sewing studio. I'm Regina Carlovaro. I work at Genome America. Um, I wanted to show you a quick mask uh, project today. I know there's tons of videos out there, tons of mask patterns, but I wanted to highlight the serger and how it speeds up the whole sewing project of making masks. Um, so that way you have more time to do projects that you want to do for yourself because I am a selfish sewer and I am kind of tired of making masks for everybody in my family. I don't know about you, but uh, since I live in New York, everybody is required to have a mask now when we go out, whether it's to the grocery store or elsewhere. So I've been churning out masks for people. So I wanted to find a way to make them faster. Um, a lot of the patterns out there for surgery use is the pleated masks. I don't care for those personally. That's my own preference. Um, I feel like they climb into your eyes when you're wearing them. And of course, the last thing you should be doing is fiddling with your mask. So I do like the more fitted mask um, that fits a little bit over your nose and then it, it goes down below your eyes so you don't have that problem. But Traditionally, this pattern is used, uh, made using a sewing machine, which is a little bit more time, um, you know, uses more time to make it. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this on the serger. And then there's two different options, whether you have elastic. I know it's sometimes hard to find elastic out there, or if you want to make your own string or um, like a spaghetti strap to feed through the, the guide so you can attach it to your head that way. So let me go over what you're gonna to need to do this. So if you come over here to my cutting mat, like I mentioned, there's a lot of patterns out there for uh, making masks um, already, but if you're ne needing a quick uh, find, our sister company, Elna, currently has a mask tutorial on their website and it's put together traditional uh, using a traditional sewing machine method. So when I cut these out, the main thing you wanna do when you adapt this for creating it on a serger is you're going to cut out your outside pieces slightly bigger than your lining pieces. And by bigger, I mean the width of the mask should be about an inch wider in width across the side piece. Um, the reason for that is this is what we're going to use to make our band to add, uh, slide our elastic, our, our uh, string through. Okay, so that's the main thing. All right, so now we're gonna go over to the serger and I'm gonna show you how we get that set up. I'm using the Janome Airthread 2000D today and we're going to just use it as a three thread overlock to start out with. So I've removed my left needle, kept my right needle in. Um, I've got regular sewing thread in my lower looper and my right needle. In my upper looper, I've put woolly nylon in the machine. You don't have to do this for the whole project, but I did that just so it saves me a step later when I do a rolled edge, I don't have to then put my woolly nylon thread on. So my settings are three across on my tension. I am going to change and decrease my stitch length just a little bit because I just want a little bit of tighter stitch, okay? So once you have the machine set up, you're simply going to sew the front seams together on both your um, outside and lining piece. The reason why I'm doing a three thread versus a four thread is because it's going to be a narrower seam. Since we're doing a curve, um, if you're doing this traditionally on a sewing machine and you have a wider seam allowance, you would have to then clip all of this, you know, all the seams so that when you iron it outside, you have a nice curve. So by doing a three thread, we're doing a much narrower seam. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to trim off because this was a pattern meant to have a seam allowance. So I'm trimming off a little bit of that seam allowance. And then I'm just slowly bringing my way around, keeping that consistent. So now see how small of a seam allowance you have here? So when I go over to take this to the iron to press it, it's not going to be um, necessary for me to clip that seam because it's going to press up nice and easy without all that additional clipping. So it'll keep a nice stable seam even though it's narrow. So now you're gonna just repeat that on your lining piece. So after you press those center seam on the front and your lining, you're going to put them together wrong sides together, not right sides together, which is what you typically do when you're sewing. So since I have ironed my seams in the same direction on the ironing board, when I put them together, they go the opposite direction, which makes them nest together perfectly when I go to put these together. Um, so that way, when I go to sew my rolled edge, I will have a little bit less bulk in that seam. So I'm pinning this together. Um, just like a sewing machine, I'm gonna make sure I take these pins out before I even get my, my uh, needle close to those seams. Next, we're going to change the air thread serger 
over to a rolled edge. So since I already have it as a three thread, it's going to be very easy. All I need to do is take it from standard sewing to tight. That is going to tighten my tension for me automatically. So it's going to cup that thread, upper thread, and make it roll around. We're also going to come down here. We're going to remove the stitch finger. So we're going to take it from standard to rolled edge. And then last, we're going to go over here to our stitch length and we're going to change it to R for rolled edge. So that should be easy to remember. You don't have to play with anything else up here on your tensions. The last thing I'm gonna do before I start using that rolled edge is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just clip a tiny little triangle out of that uh, center seam on the front, um, top and the bottom. And again, the reason for this is I want my rolled edge to lay nice and consistent. And since I'm going from uh, two, th uh, two layers of fabric on most of the mass to here, which is going to be uh, a lot more, it can change the way that the rolled edge looks. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and get that underneath my needle. It's always good to trim a little bit off when doing a rolled edge, all right? So that'll give the machine enough fabric to cup the fabric and actually put a stitch around it. All right, so we're going to move those needles, those pins, and simply sew it around here. So as you can see, much faster than a sewing machine. And since we're doing a rolled edge, we're not going to have to turn this right side out and iron it and top stitch it. It's doing it all in one step for us. Okay? So nice and pretty, isn't that gorgeous? Look at that rolled edge, see that? Now we're gonna do the bottom part. Now the bottom part has a little bit of an inverted V, so we're just gonna work around that a little bit as we come to it, and I'll show you how to manip manipulate your fabric. Pins out. Okay, we're getting to that corner where I cut that little tiny V in there. So what you're gonna do is when you get there, you're just gonna kind of squish the fabric over here and straighten this fabric out. You're in charge of the fabric. Okay, so there you go. Top, bottom, done beautifully. So last thing we have to do is the band. So I'm gonna change the machine back to my three thread overcast, bring in my stitch length to two. I'm going to change it from standard, uh, from tight to standard again. And I'm going to make sure my needle is up and I'm going to change my, put my stitch finger back in place if I go, from going from R to S for standard sewing. Okay, now this is the part you have to think about a little bit. It's the same fold you would do on a blind hem on a sewing machine. So the first thing you do is you hem it up like, okay, here's my hem. And then you fold it back on itself. But because we're using a serger, we're going to make sure that we get this fold in the seam. And we're gonna cut off a little bit, but that's okay because we gave ourselves plenty of extra fabric to work with. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two stitches into my fabric. I'm going to lift up my foot and grab my thread chain and I'm gonna bring it around. So that way I have less trimming or less um, thread chains that I'm gonna have to fix later on. So after sewing that seam, it creates a lovely little band, a little uh, opening there so you can put your elastic or your um, your tie through. You are gonna have some extra serger threads uh, if you didn't loop them through. So what you can do is simply put a little bit of fray check on there um, and then let it completely dry before you cut this off. So put the fray check on any loose threads. You can use a large eye needle and you can thread those back through the seam if you want, but if you're trying to just chug them out, fray check is really fast. If you don't have elastic handy, you can make this quick tie using your serger as well. Uh, this, tr this technique traditionally is for like spaghetti straps or lingerie, something that's done on a much slinkier fabric, but it can still be done on a cotton. So what you're going to do is you're going to, I'm still using a three thread setting. I'm going to take my thread chain and I'm gonna make it longer than the piece of fabric. So you simply just bring it around and measure it up and see where that is. And add a little extra. Okay, once you have that done, you're going to turn the fabric, um, put it on your serger with the face up, the pretty side up. And what I, I usually call this is uh, my thread taco. So your thread chain goes in the center, you fold this over, 
I do this with the foot down because it gives me a little extra tension on that thread because I want it nice and tight in the center of, of my folded fabric so I can make sure it's really far over to the left. Once it's there, go ahead and start sewing. And you're just going to keep sewing, making sure that that thread chain stays in the middle of the folded fabric as close to that fold as possible so you don't accidentally sew over it. So you just finish it up. Now I did, um, for the tie I made, I did the whole width of my fabric. Um, that's up to you. It's a little bit harder to get that long of a piece done. So if you do decide to do that, just be a little bit more patience. But once you get it going, it does come through nice and easy. Okay. All right, so that's what it's gonna look like. And there's your thread chain that's now through there. So what I recommend is you go ahead and use your tweezers or something to kind of get the top of this pushed in a little bit and that's gonna help you get going. And you can see how it's moving in there and every once in a while I just kind of pull it through. Again, this was, you know, this technique was usually designed for silkier fabrics, but as you can see, it's working beautifully here on this cotton. And you just pull it through. And now you have your tie. So once you're done with this um, and you've threaded it through your um, binding here, you can either um, tie little knots in it or you could uh, take it, put it in your sewing machine or hand sew it closed if you really want to. So that's how quick and easy it is to make a spaghetti string or a spaghetti tie uh, for your mask. Put it around your head. You can put the uh, top straps around your, over your ears and just simply tie this in the back. So we're ready. We're going to go for a walk now. Um, don't necessarily have to have these for a walk, but just to be safe, we have them if we need them. Thank you for joining me and I hope you learned something new about your surgery today. Have a good day.